Greetings and welcome to another short episode on LinkedIn to Kitsifos. My name is George Schmidt and you can find me at the support team of Sophistic, where I'm dealing with customers' inquiries and working as a consultant engineer. Today's video is all about one single command, namely the strat C of module AQB. When you use the steel cross-section resistance of beam graphical task in SSD or designing a steel structure, you have the possibility to select between multiple choices of methodologies. One of the suggested ways is to use the so-called total interaction of forces and moments procedure. By doing so, actually under the hood you enter the command stress C, the whole ADO is about. The procedure performs a cross-sectional verification based on Eurocode 3 only for the cross-sections of class 1 and 2, which sections will be checked in a plastic manner. This allows a more economic design. First of all, let's go through the regulations of the EN 1993.1.1 and later on we can discuss how different module AQB functions, if at all. When the topic I'm about to present a bit fast for you, feel free to stop the video and rewind. So, in Eurocode 1993.1.1, the chapter 6.2.9 deals with the elements subject to bending and axial force simultaneously. This chapter states that when an axial force is present, allowance should be made for its effect on the plastic bending moment resistance. There are two different scenarios possible when bending moment and axial force act together. The first one is when a so-called uniaxial bending and an axial force happen together. The uniaxial bending moment is referred to a bending about one of the single principal axes. The relevant formulas can be found in the clause 6.2.9.15 in that case. The second condition is when biaxial bending occurs. It means that a moment is acting on the cross section in both the yy and zz axis respectively. It can happen with or without the axial force present in the cross section. In this case, the respective references are given in the clause 6.2.9.16. In principle, we know from the previous clause that the bending strength of the member can be affected when axial force exists in the cross section. However, there are two exceptions, namely when the axial force is relatively low, the definition of low means less than 25% of the axial capacity of the entire section, or less than 50% of the axial capacity of the web. This slide shows the design for the uniaxial bending plus axial force scenario. The bending can occur in the yy axis or in zz axis. When the axial load is relatively low, as prescribed in the slide for the yy axis and the zz axis, no reduction will be applied on the moment resistance of the member. For the yy axis, the axial load should be less than 25% of its entire compression resistance or 50% of the axial force of the web. When the bending is acting in the ZZ plane, the compressive stress of the web should be determined to decide whether the concomitant axial force level is low or not. If these conditions are met, then there will be no reductions of the moment resistance of the section. However, if these conditions are not complied with, then reduction should be applied on different types of the member. The middle strip of the slide in blue represents the member of I and H sections, whereas the bottom part in orange shows the member for the hollow sections. Ultimately, the reduced moment resistance should be greater than the design moment acting on the member. The moment resistance for the YY axis and for the ZZ axis differ, but both of them are defined in the function of N and A, where the N is the so-called load ratio, and A is the web area ratio. The highlighted rectangles represent the reduction factors in the function of the N and A. The MPLYRD and MPLZRD are the full bending moment capacity of the member without any reductions. The load factor should be determined by quantifying the ratio of the design normal force and the axial force capacity of the member. Very similarly, the web area ratio is a quantification of the percentage of the web area over the total area of the member, and the A ratio should not be greater than 0.5. To acquire the bending moment resistance of the member, you can multiply the actual moment capacity with the reduction factor computed as a function of N and A. It must be noted that for the ZZ axis bending, when the N is less than A, there will be no reductions in the terms of the moment resistance. However, when the N is more than A, 
a reduction is applied. The highlighted area represents the reduced moment equation for the hollow sections, such as square hollow sections or rectangular hollow sections. Basically, as you can also see, the formulation of the reduction of the bending capacity of the yy axis and of the zz axis is very similar to what we saw for the i and h sections. Only the parameter aw and af differ, which are highlighted in the case of the hollow type of sections and the welded box sections. But the conclusion is the same for these type of sections too, namely the moment resistance could decrease in the existence of the bending moment and the axial force. Ultimately, the MED must be smaller or equal to MNRD. The equations and explanations till now were applicable for the uniaxial bending only. Let us now review the case of biaxial bending moment. When there is a biaxial bending, meaning the bending is acting in the two principal directions, the highlighted equation may be applied. The MYED and the MZEDE represent the acting design bending moment in the YY and in the ZZ axis, and MNYRD and MNZRD refer to the reduced moment capacity, which could be obtained as we discussed in the previous slides. The value of alpha and beta differ among the different type of member. The blue rectangle is for the I and H sections, the orange is for the circular hollow sections, and the green one is for the rectangular hollow sections. For the rectangular hollow sections, the alpha and beta will be the same. The N stands for the load ratio, as we used to it. As for the circular hollow sections, the reduced moment is given by the highlighted equation in the function of the load ratio on the power of 1.7. This equation is applicable for the member subjected to biaxial bending with and without axial force. Alternatively, you may use this equation from clause 6.2.17, which is more conservative. Both of the highlighted equations are applicable for the case of biaxial bending moment with or without axial force. Now let's see how module AQB considers the web area ratio. Basically, it calculates AW from the square root of 3 multiplied with VZPL, which is the plastic shear resistance of the cross section in local Z direction, divided with the plastic resistance of the normal force of the cross section NPL, which value at the end should be less than 0.5. And if you work out the formulas, you will get actually the same as AZ over A, where AZ is the shear area in the local Z direction of the cross section and the A is the gross area of the cross-section. At the end, this formula is actually equivalent to the value that can be derived from the equation 6.39 and 6.40 of EN 1993.1.1. The values of the NPL and VYPL, or eventually VZPL, can be read from the subchapter called Design Forces and Moments of Module Aqua for each cross-section in the model. Now let's proceed to equation 6.41, which contains implicitly the equation 6.39 and 6.40, because MNYRD and MNZRD appear in them. Also, this equation is the first one to be considered when the stress C command is called. For the sake of simplicity, I will say equation furthermore, although it's an inequality. The current slide presents the case when the first summand of the equation 6.41 is being derived. Namely, the MYED over MNYRD term can be extended to MYED over MPLYRD times 1 minus 0.5a over 1 minus n, where n equals to NYED over NPLRD. However, we are facing with a problem when the NYED over NPLRD ratio, or in other words the load ratio, is close to 1. Since in that case the denominator gets close to 0, hence the utilization level yields to an unrealistic value. To get around the problem, both sides of the equation will be multiplied with 1 minus n, then n will be added to both sides of the equation. In this way we can reach that the n, the load ratio, will be on the left hand side of the equation. Of course the same rearrangement for mzed over mnzrd can be undertaken as it can be seen in the current slide. Finally, the derived term that contains n, the load ratio, 
can be substituted back to the equation 6.41 and resulted in the extended equation of 2.15 as it is also presented in the AQB manual. On the other hand, to be conservative, the assessed utilization factor cannot be greater than the linear combination of the bending moments in the yy and the zz plane. In other words, the value of alpha and beta can be taken as unity, which leads us to the second equation that shall be considered by the determination of the utilization level when command stress C is called. This equation is also mentioned in the AQB manual with the number 2.20. In order to obtain the third equation that is taken into account by assessing the utilization level with the stress C common. This time we take the equation 6.41 exactly as it is given in the EN 1993.1.1. For the sake of getting the same unit as for the previous equations, we must bring the equation of 6.41 under the root of square root of alpha times beta. Then similarly to overcome the same problem of the appearance of 1 minus n in the denominator, both sides of the equation will be multiplied with 1 minus n. Then, as we previously also experienced, n will be added to both sides of the equation. In this way, we can reach that the n, the load ratio, will be on the left-hand side of the equation. In addition to that, to be conservative, instead of simply multiplying with the 1 minus 0.5a, as we previously did, in this term, the maximum of 1 minus 0.5a and 1 minus 0.5n will be used. The resulting equation is also presented in the AQB manual with the number 2.19. Finally, the value of stress C will be assessed as the minimum of the maximum of the equations 2.15, 2.19 and 2.20 as per the presented term. One more very important information. If the examined cross-section cannot be classified as class 1 or 2, meaning it belongs to class 3, then the verification of the cross-section will be the same as if the user had entered stre EF and in that case an evaluation of the maximum stresses for every force principle and von Mises yield stress in all sectional points will be undertaken.